So hello to everyone tuning in um, and to people in the future who are watching the recording. Um, this is our talk with Bob Reyes of Mozilla Philippines, uh, Mozilla and the Open Web. So we're super excited to be hosting Bob for this talk um, as we explore net neutrality, the internet, what a free, inclusive, and open um, web looks like, and our role as technologists, designers, and creatives in playing a part in shaping a better web for all, especially in the Philippines. Um, in particular, we invited Bob for this talk just because there's been a lot of conversation in the developed groups about um, just fake news, disinformation, um, and also we've been discussing a lot about digital radicalization and extremism that have risen from the internet and figuring out how to combat this and be intentional in our work um, as student creators, um, whether we haven't stepped our foot into the technology field yet, um, whether we're just learning about the internet um, and our potential as engineers or designers in school, we all have a responsibility to shape a better future, um, be it with our parents and family, um, being more mindful of the content that our elder peers may be accessing online, um, also in the information we share um, around our social circles and friend groups, and also the way we just like communicate or engage with information online, um, especially in a really haphazard um, environment where the way we communicate um, and the way we connect with people during the pandemic is all like all rests um, on the internet. So um, to introduce Bob, um, he is a Mozilla Reps mentor and tech speaker based in Makati City. He currently leads the localization efforts of the Mozilla Philippines community, translating Firefox Desktop and Firefox for Android to Tagalog, Sobono, and Hiligaynon. Bob also writes for the Manila Bulletin as a tech news columnist, and he is a dad to Seon and Haswell. So anytime you'd like to start, um, feel free to go ahead. Okay, thank you. Yeah, okay, so uh, can you see the screen now? Yeah, it looks great. Awesome. Okay, cool. So feel free to interrupt me if uh, my audio is uh, swanky. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm from the Philippines. So thank you for having me. Thank you to Develop Philippines uh, for giving us the opportunity to talk about uh, Mozilla and the open web. So again, so uh, if you are on social media, uh, if you want to join the conversation uh, anywhere on Facebook, Twitter, uh, we are hashtag Mozilla PH. Okay, so again, about me, my name is Bob Reyes. Uh, it's Robert, but yeah, you may call me Bob. There are a lot of Robert Reyes out there. I've been a Mozilla mentor and tech speaker for Mozilla uh, since 2011. Uh, but my, my history of being a contributor to Mozilla dates back way back 2001. Uh, I wear several hats, uh, including being a tech columnist for the Manila Bulletin, uh, manage a football club for uh, our church, if you are on Twitter, my Twitter is at Bob Reyes. And as mentioned, yeah, I have two kids, Zion and Haswell. So gives you an idea. I'm not, a, I'm not that techie, okay, by the names of my uh, children. Been using Firefox since version 1. If you are someone young, uh, you may not know that Mozilla Firefox has been around for quite some time. So as a Filipino Mozillian, uh, this is a... The, the, this is uh, what makes me proud, okay? If you are in the uh, San Francisco area, uh, in front of our office is the Firefox Monument. And what does the monument have? It basically has all the names of people who in one way or the other has been part of uh, building the organization and of the browser. So my name's there, together with a couple of Filipino colleagues and friends uh, from here and abroad. Okay. So what is our agenda for today? Oh, I think you accidentally unmuted. Oh, there. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the agenda for today is that, yeah, we're talking about what Mozilla is, uh, what the open web is, a uh, brief history of the internet and the web, uh, what the web looks like right, uh, right now, and how do we get the web back on track? And if we still have time, I'm timing myself, so we'll have Q&A. So just to introduce our organization. So Mozilla is a global nonprofit, and if you are too young to know, we started from this. So this is Netscape, okay? 
I I happen to have my first uh, interaction with the internet way back around 1995 here in the Philippines. And the very first browser that I used was uh, Netscape. So from then on, uh, I never looked uh, at using any other browser for as long as I can run Netscape on my computer. And came came a point in time wherein uh, the engineers at Netscape decided to give away the source code of Netscape uh, to the general public. And that was called the Mozilla Project. That was in 1998, when not, uh, the source code for the Netscape Communicator was posted by uh, Mozilla.org. Okay. So that is uh, how Mozilla started. So the giving away of the source code to the general public is called the Mozilla Project. And up to this day, we call, we, we call our organization and all the things that we do as a project. Now, what is open sourcing? Uh, for those who are not aware, it's like you go to a fast food, you buy your uh, favorite meal, and when they give you the actual food, they, it comes along with the recipe on how you are going to make the same food at home. So it's how open sourcing works, okay? And during that time, in 1998, uh, having a product open source is quite not a familiar thing, okay? Many people, many organizations called Mozilla organization that time something like crazy for giving away the source code for a product like Netscape. And Netscape is not a free product, okay? You have to buy or subscribe to that software during that time. Now, being a nonprofit organization, we have a mission. What is our mission? Our mission is to build a better internet. And also, it is part of our mission to ensure that the internet will remain as a global public resource that is open and accessible to all. When there are issues related to openness, accessibility, and all this stuff, uh, you can bet on Mozilla to be there. So we want to have an internet that truly puts people first so that you and me, as individuals, can shape our own experiences and to be feel empowered safe and independent going online. Now, in order for us to be true to our mission, we have several products and services. We are best known for Firefox, the web browser. So our mantra is committed to you, your privacy, and an open web. If you're not using Firefox, it's okay. What we want to people to know is that they have options aside from the browser that their operating system is asking them to use by default. Uh, if you are not using Firefox, starting Firefox 63, we are now at Firefox 80 something. All desktop versions of Firefox now include an experimental cookie policy that blocks cookies and other site data from third party tracking resources. Uh, why is it important? Later, as we go along with my talk, you will know that websites are actually following you wherever you are uh, on the web. So this is Firefox. Uh, there, there was a debate uh, or issue a few weeks back regarding the Firefox logo. No, we did not change the Firefox browser logo. The one that you are seeing on my screen right now is the Firefox family logo, okay? The logo for the browser is still the one with the fox sitting, okay? So this is the one on the left side is the Firefox family. The one with the fox is still Firefox the web browser, okay? So we also have Firefox Lockwise if you want to have a service wherein your passwords are managed in a safe environment, okay, on your device or on your computer, you may use Firefox Lockwise. We also have Firefox Monitor if you want to check if your email address has been part of any known breach uh, for the past few months, okay, just go to monitor.firefox.com, enter your email address and it will tell you if your email has been part of any publicly known breaches. So we also have different uh, flavors of Firefox. We have Nightly, we have Developer, and we have Beta. So by default, you'll get the orange one, which is the Firefox browser uh, release uh, version or edition, and then you have the other more. For those who are using mobile, uh, we have Firefox for Android and Firefox for iOS, okay? Why? Because uh, 
we want you to have the speed that you need with the privacy that you want on all your devices. Okay? At present, Firefox for desktop is available in Tagalog. Okay? So if you're speaking Tagalog, you 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 have the option of downloading Firefox in Tagalog as well as Firefox in Tagalog for Android. Uh, at present we are at currently we are working on translating Firefox for Android into Cebuano and Hiligaynon. Okay, so later more on that. Another thing, uh, if you are someone like me who wants to test different services online, chances are you have a separate uh, email address to use for this kind of stuff, just to test for uh, just to test them. You don't want to give them your real email address for fear of being spammed or hacked or etc. Uh, there is another solution to that. You may use Firefox Relay. So what is Firefox Relay? Firefox Relay uh, will make it easy for us to create aliases uh, using randomly generated email addresses that will forward messages to your real inbox. So it's like you can subscribe to any online service without actually giving your real email address. Okay, so just go to relay.firefox.com, sign up, and then uh, you have the ability to create a relay email addresses. If you don't need that particular relay address anymore, simply delete it, okay, from your account, and then all emails sent to that will no longer be forwarded to your real email address or real inbox okay so you can use it to protect yourself from online accounts and identity from hackers uh we also have this common voice what is common voice so this is our initiative to help uh teach machines on how real people speak okay why uh many companies especially the big tech companies uh, they have their own uh stuff related to AI, machine learning, uh, etc. They collect information, they collect voices, they collect data from all of us, but the ones that they had collected is not available publicly. Okay? You cannot do that and ask, you cannot simply approach them and ask, can, can I use your uh, data sets for my own projects, uh, even if it's just a school project, okay? So what we want is something uh, that will not suffocate innovation because what big tech companies are doing, it suffocates innovation because the only the data that they are collecting from us, it is only them who can use it, okay? So in Common Voice, Mozilla Common Voice is a project that uh, will help voice, uh, will help everyone make voice recognition open and accessible to everyone. So if you want to try it out or contribute, if you want to verify things, okay, you can go to commonvoice.mozilla.org. Okay, there are several languages there. If you want to use the data sets for your own project, it is uh, possible with Common Voice. So there, so so much for the Mozilla stuff. Uh, we have more product, but I'm not going to uh, uh, discuss all of them. Thunderbird is still there, the email client, so. Yeah, but uh, I will go deal more with uh, open web. So what is the open web? I always uh, begin my discussion uh, talk with open web with the former SSS website. Uh, if you're in the Philippines, you know what the SSS is, okay? Social Security System. This was their old website. Good thing that they had changed this, uh, but this has been something that they have on their system for decades, okay? What is wrong with this? One, I'm using a Mac. So I'm running Firefox on a Mac, okay? When I go to their website, I want to check uh, about my membership to the security system. The first thing that I will notice is that, hey, it tells me that I need to use Internet Explorer version 11. So how, how in this world will I be able to run IE 11 on a Mac? That's one. Second, does that mean that you only need to that only users of IE will be able to log into the system? Uh, more often than not, yes. Okay, so this is not what the open web is. That's one. So what is the open web? The open web is a technical concept that is 
on one end, open source code. On the other end, it is open standards. Okay, it goes. Uh, they they go hand in hand. Okay, open source code, open standards. What do we mean in, by by those? Okay, it's like having the this this democratic concept. Okay, of using free expression and digital inclusion. Okay, you cannot have one technology and dictate users that you only need to use the specific specific tools, specific software in order to use a particular technology. That is not openness, okay? Put it on the concept, on the idea of uh, something that is online or on the web, then that is open web. So the open web is a web by and for all of its users, not by select gatekeepers or governments, okay? Let me uh, bring you back a few years uh, down memory lane when the web or the internet that we know now has just been started. When it was starting, it is a place where people get connected, open and safe, okay? I can still remember the very first day that I went online. I wanted to send an email to a friend in Australia. This was in 1995. I, uh, uh, I went to this uh, shop it's called Internet Universe. If you're around my age, okay, you will know what Internet Universe is in Park Square, Makati. Okay, it was one of the first, if not the first, cyber cafes in the country. Okay, yan yung naging Metopia. Okay, so yun yung trivia dun sa Internet Universe. So, uh, I wanted to go online and send an email to a friend. So I fired up Netscape. The only thing is that I do not have an email address. So what I've been doing for the past 30 minutes is that I was entering the email address of my friend in the address bar of Netscape and nothing is happening. Okay, nothing is happening. It's just, you just see the end with the globe turning, etc. okay? And then this this person said, well, went, went to me and asked, do you need help? I said, no. Another 30 minutes uh, passed and then that's the only time that I told him, I actually want to send an email to a friend, but I do not know how it is done. I spent 60 minutes paying at one peso 50 centavos per minute doing nothing, okay? Nothing's happening on my screen. And then that's the only time that, they, that he told me that I actually need an email address for me to send an email to someone, okay? So that's, that's my very first interaction with the internet with the web okay fail okay but during that time i was in high school then 1995 people ahead of us who had been connected okay they feel open and safe over the web many people made millions because of the web okay it is a place to build their dreams many of those who created websites amass millions if not thousands of dollars okay building their ideas over the internet over the web but just like any technology just like any piece of uh science okay the web needed nurturing as time go on this was during the time when pop-up malwares, hacking incidents, etc. are becoming a thing over the internet, okay? Virus from being something that is running on your computer is now online and it is spreading fast because everyone gets, uh, many people gets connected over the internet. There is also a lack of choice, okay? How many times have you been uh, to a website asking if you agree to something and the only choice that you have is yes okay especially now that privacy is more of a thing okay we need to we, uh, people need to understand that they should have a choice it is their right to have a choice okay you cannot have two options and both of them are the same okay those are not options okay 
nowadays, what we see, there are many contents that are being presented on the web behind cold gardens. Okay? They are not making content readily available for everyone to digest or to see. So this was during the time when many people are asking, uh, so is this the web? Is, is, is this the internet? Uh, if you're going to ask the father, uh, the founders of the World Wide Web, they're saying, no, it is not. There was even talks uh, recently wherein they wanted to create another version of the World Wide Web because they were saying that what we have right now is more of something like it's a hope, hopeless uh, scenario. It will be hard for them to change and bring it back to what was the original design of the web. Could there be, uh, could the web be something better? Our answer, yes, okay. It will all depend on the users of the web, like you and me. So this is the web now. Sorry for the term, but this is what we're using. The internet and the web is FCK for a lot of reasons. First reason. Many companies are making money by tracking users and they are monetizing these users or the data that they are getting from the users to advertisers, okay? That's how the web works now. Your data, your personal data, your photos, your location data, these are being sold to advertisers. In the Philippines, uh, when I go to school before the pandemic, I normally make a demo of how you are being tracked by this website. You go to a, if you want to buy something, the common scenario is that you go to a search engine. You search for this product, maybe for the price and where to get it. And then before you know it, as, as soon as you get back to your social media page or account, you will notice all of the advertisements in that website are actually the product that you had just searched from within a search engine, okay? What does, what does that tell us? It is a proof that whatever you had been searching, the terms, okay, that is your data, is being sold to the social media website, okay? Try to notice that, okay? And, and in a more elaborate uh, experiment, when you are talking about something, okay, your computer may be listening. Your social media network may be listening. Before you know it, the ads that will show on your next access to your social media are the things that you were talking about minutes ago. Okay, so that is one. Search engines and social feeds are governed by algorithms. And these algorithms are biased. How biased are they? They are biased in the same ways as the people who create them. Okay, they only want you to see what they want you to see. False news uh, online continue to confuse many people. Okay, to a fact, uh, to a, to a point that many people are starting to believe in it. Okay. And, they, and take it as something factual, whereas in reality, they are fake, okay? So this is uh, dangerous, okay? Especially now that, now that we are in a pandemic. Also, the web now, the internet now, is more of a new breed of marketplace, something that never existed before, okay? What is being sold online now are not just physical items not just software, not just intangible items. Your data, your personality, or maybe your identity is now put in a marketplace. It's a marketplace for selling data, a marketplace for selling your attention. Remember how TV networks, how uh, shows on your television uh, make money. Okay, through means of advertisement. But being online, they make more money because you ha they have your attention, and the un undivided attention, okay? Because you are hooked to these kinds of things. 
There's a saying, if you're not paying for the product, maybe you are the product. Okay? It is so true, especially now that most people are online. So, what, what, how, how do we get the internet back on track? So, we at Mozilla, we had this campaign a few months ago. So, let's un-FCK the internet. Okay? This is how it looks like. Uh, if you've been following Mozilla, uh, our blogs, our Twitter feed, or Instagram, you may have the chance of seeing this. So, an FCK, the internet. So, how do we do that? One, we need to unzrock it. Okay? Unzrock it. If you're using Firefox, uh, and you cannot let go of your Facebook account, okay? Uh, well, Facebook, for one, follows you around the web, even if you don't have an account, okay? If you go to a Facebook page, even without actually logging it, logging into your account, yeah, uh, chances are Facebook will be able to track you down. If you're using Firefox, uh, we have this extension called the Firefox Container. So this is the logo, okay? Installing it, using it, will prevent Facebook from following you around the web. Because what will happen is that when you open a tab on your Facebook, uh, on your Firefox, go to Facebook, all the data, okay, that Facebook will try to get from you will remain on that tab alone. It will not be able to see or talk to other websites outside of that container, outside of that tab. So that is what the Facebook container looks like okay that's why the, the logo is like more of a fence so it puts you inside this fence wherein facebook will only see all of the data that you are accessing from within the facebook website nothing else okay so if you are going to make search if you are going to check on your email okay etc on other tabs from within the same firefox installation it will not have the ability to see what you are doing okay so that is one so uh, i was i was I was asked by several friends how to be safe online especially on facebook and i normally tell them the safest way to be online and on facebook is to delete your facebook account but of course they will not do that okay so if you cannot delete your facebook account the second best thing to do is use firefox install the Firefox container extension, okay, so that it will not be able to follow you outside of the social media. The less data Facebook have on you, the less that they can give away to bad actors. Who are these bad actors? Uh, hackers, maybe, okay, people who are selling data, advertisers. Next, uh, Try to be uh, a real person online. How? Uh, if you are aware of social bookmarking, okay, we have this company called uh, Pocket. So if you want to avoid misinformation minefield, I, I suggest that you use Pocket. So what is Pocket? So it's a social uh, bookmarking website uh, that was acquired by Mozilla. At Pocket, we use uh, real people, not algorithms. Why? Many websites now, they try to automate things and they use algorithms. But the thing with algorithms is that they do not have taste. All the good stuff is hiding. Okay? They only want you to see what they want you to see. So algorithms cannot count reactions. Uh, algorithms count reactions, but they cannot count depth wit, knowledge, and truth. That's why it's called a misinformation minefield. At Pocket, we use human create, uh, human create curators. Okay? What you see in Pocket were curated by human beings. Okay? So we share the most diverse, trustworthy, and accurate stories on the web. Okay? So that is Pocket. And not next thing, 
we know that the internet or like any other technology is far from perfect okay but it is it still has the magic that keeps us coming back why we recently at mozilla we asked people around the globe uh how the internet has kept them sane hopeful and connected uh this past few years okay especially during the pandemic uh if you are on social media and following us uh try to search for hashtag dear internet okay we also encourage people uh like you to write a love letter okay to the internet okay use the hashtag dear internet so how the internet has kept you uh kept you sane hopeful and connected since the pandemic okay you'll be amazed by how people reacted and posted their uh, stories online. If you have time, if you have the resources, uh, we encourage you to donate, not just to Mozilla, okay, but to nonprofits that fight, uh, that, that keep the fight for a healthy internet, okay? There are many, not just us, okay? So for one, if you are going to uh, support the Mozilla Foundation, it will help uh, us to put you more in control, okay, to shape your online experiences and shape the future of the web for public good. So what are the uh, what are the several projects, what are some of the projects that we are doing? Uh, if you run a website and if you still do not have a secured uh, uh, socket layer, okay, or SSL, uh, there is this uh, thing called uh, letsencrypt.org. We are providing free SSL to websites, okay? Just go to letsencrypt.org and get one. It's for free. It, it's one of the projects uh, supported by the Mozilla Foundation. Uh, in, in some places, we are, uh, in, in, some, in some aspect, we can support projects in the open source uh, and open web space, okay? Through some sort of grant. Okay, so all you need to do is just to apply and those things. Okay, so just go to mozilla.org. Now, for the Philippines, if you are in the Philippines, uh, we have this local community. So Mozilla community, uh, there are many around the globe. So I can talk about uh, Mozilla Philippines community. So what do we need? We are looking for people who can use and test our product because by doing so, we can be uh, we can we can make sure that we can deliver only the best to our users okay like you and me we want we, we want to have people to help us spread the word about free and open source software pos okay and online privacy we need it now okay we need people who are willing to learn and to be trained in helping our people become web literate okay not all people are web literate especially those who only have access to certain websites okay, and social media. Many of them know and think that is that what they see is already the web. They need to go beyond what they're seeing from within those social media channels. Okay? And we need people to be more awesome online. How? So you can go to join.mozillaph.org, okay, join.mozillaph.org. Uh, you can volunteer to several of our initiatives. Uh, from my team, what we're doing is we uh, translate and localize uh, products and websites of Mozilla to Tagalog, Cebuano, and Hiligaynon, okay? So if you are speaking any of those languages, those are the ongoing uh, projects that we have. So as mentioned earlier, we already have Firefox desktop uh, in Tagalog uh, and uh, Firefox uh, for Android into Tagalog as well. And we are working on having Firefox for Android translated into Cebuano and Hiligaynon. Okay. It, it, it is more awesome. Why? Uh, we are not using machines to translate these things. We are using people like you and me. Okay. So you can contribute. You can participate. Uh, even if you are not a developer. Okay, so we say at Mozilla, it is not only developers who are welcome. We welcome people from all industries, from across all nations and uh, races, etc. Okay, 
We need people to promote online privacy and security. Okay. We need people to help us fight fake news, disinformation, and misinformation in the web, especially on the onset of this coronavirus uh, pandemic. There are uh, there have been a lot of fake news, disinformation, and information over the web. Okay, just before I went online now, I have been uh, I have been uh, correcting one of the posts uh, made to our groups. Okay. Someone said that this should be done to fight the virus, etc. And apparently, it's fake news. Okay, so if you find something posted online, fact check first. Okay, and if you see that this is fake news, this is disinformation or misinformation, uh, do your share. Tell this person that whatever he or she has posted is actually fake news. Okay, so as not to spread it further okay so again how to join just go to join.mozillaph.org and i think that's it so if you have questions now is the best time to answer it i still have 10 minutes on my talk uh timer she has yeah. questions yes um thank you so much for the amazing talk if anyone in the audience or on facebook has questions um, you can feel free to type it in the chat or in the comments and I'll read it out for you. Um, but if anyone currently in the Zoom wants to ask a question, you can also raise your hand. Um, you have to click reactions and then raise hand and then we'll unmute you so you can introduce yourself and ask your question. But there's also a poll um, that I linked where you can also ask questions anonymously if you would like, um, then we'll also read those out. But we can start with um, some of the questions that have been pre-submitted for the talk, if that sounds good. So, sure, go ahead. Yeah. Um, so from the VELF member, we recently read about how the introduction of Facebook's free internet plan had taught people that the entirety of the web was just Facebook or whatever other social media platforms were offered in telco plans. What are your thoughts on plans like Facebook's free internet? Do these democratize the web or isolate it? And I know we talked about this before we went live. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, so for one, uh, what, what free basic or free FB in the Philippines is, uh, as it is known is doing, it, it harms uh, people from knowing what the real web is, okay? Uh, there was a study conducted somewhere, I think it's in South Africa. And for people who are first time citizens of the web, of the internet, and the first thing that they know and had access is free basics or free FB, they will be uh, left in that space, in that void that everything that they see from within the realms of Facebook is what they will know as the web. So that is not good, okay? That's not good. Uh, we need people to have access to what the real internet and what the real web is, okay? So that is, so if, if the question is, if it is making more harm than good, yes. Uh, that is not good for uh, citizens of the internet, okay? Uh, having this kinds of packages, promotions, it's not good for, it's, it's not a healthy thing. For, to, for us to have uh, over the web. Okay, thank you for that. Um, so Gian has a question. Um, so Gian asks, I heard of IPFS, which I think is a way to decentralize the web. Is that something Mozilla is working on too? And I think IPFS is the, that's the file sharing protocol or something, um, or it's like a peer to peer network. <laughs> Okay. Yes, uh, I was right. <laughs> personally, I'm not aware of any projects that we are doing about IPFS at present, but uh, I can get back to you. Uh, maybe one of your teams had their side projects on it, but I'm not sure. But uh, from the recent meetings that I have attended uh, from within the organizations, I haven't heard of any as of the moment. Um, oh, yeah, Jean, I was I was about to ask that as well. So do you have any thoughts on how Mozilla is working um, towards like the centralization in general? 
it, it's more of a policy thing. So first is that uh, different organizations need to focus more on how to make the web, the internet, a healthy place for everyone. Okay. When we talk about decentralization, it will entail a lot of uh, uh, a lot of other things. Uh, and uh, personally, uh, this is not Michelle's point of view. Okay, personally, for me, we need to discuss first the underlying uh, things that will support a say a decentralized web. Okay, something to that effect. But if we are haunted by many pro problems right now, just like misinformation fake news and misinformation uh decentralization will not happen in the any anytime soon yeah thank you for that um yeah it's it's weird seeing a lot of um decentralization efforts they they also seem to be fairly isolated and although it's a great ideal dream and vision it's unfortunate that it seems very far away <laughs> yeah yeah so maybe that is the idea why the, the the founders of the World Wide Web are thinking of creating a new one rather than fixing the current one. Right. So I think um we have another question that kind of that next with the first one I asked. Um so this one is about um contending with how Facebook is the internet for many Filipinos and it's all they can access but at the same time um, ask people with like privilege to you know freely access the rest of the internet um, and I'm sure many develop members are familiar with the technology um, you know creating and consuming content um, more responsibly like what do we do to help the Filipinos who are kind of gated behind the content on Facebook and don't have access um, to sites outside, like what is the most productive way of helping them um, or impacting them in that space, especially now that we know that the internet is like a human right and that all information about like coronavirus and things like that are disseminated through it. Yeah, okay, so first things first, uh, when I'm asked what is my take uh, on the speed of internet in the Philippines, I normally tell people that, believe it or not, internet in the Philippines is not slow. But I bet you will agree with me if I say that internet in the Philippines is one of the most expensive. Okay, That is primarily for me the problem. Why? If you want faster internet connection, make sure that you are uh, ready to pay more. There's a premium to it. Okay, Whereas, uh, I, I was talking to a colleague uh, based in Berlin. He was asking me how much do I pay for my internet. I was say, telling him something like thirty US dollars for thirty-five Mbps here in the Philippines. That's thirty US dollars for thirty-five Mbps. So something like one dollar per Mbps, something to that effect. In Germany, he's paying something like twenty US dollars for one hundred Mbps. Okay, so you see the discrepancy there. Uh, across Southeast Asia, you will also notice that we are one country where internet productivity is quite expensive. Okay, that is the main point there. The internet providers, the telcos, they try to introduce cheaper packages, okay, for you to access certain websites, but not the internet itself. Okay, that is the problem. Uh, I would go for the call to make uh, internet something like a utility in the Philippines so that more people will have access and there will be more competitive rate for them to choose from. I keep on telling kids, especially my son, during my time in the late 1990s until early 2000s, I can still remember that there are more than 100 internet service providers in the Philippines. You can choose from any of this, not just two or three. Okay, maybe if we can bring something like that, the more choices, the more affordable packages that people can 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 uh, subscribe to, the better. Okay, so that 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 will basically answer some of the questions uh, related to accessibility. Okay, 
people tend to use the free ones because that is the only thing that they can afford as of the moment. That makes sense. Thank you. Um, there's similarly a question I have about, um, I guess, just like a free and open internet in the terms in the policy level. So we talked a bit about how the battle for net neutrality has mostly been centered in the states. Um, and, you know, the states has also been the, the body like questioning Facebook and other tech giants and conspiring to break them up. Um, and so far um, in the Philippines, I'm aware that we've had um, a free internet access and public places act um, among a few others and 20, and I think that one was signed in 2017. So quite a few years ago, but obviously is not like super fully enacted yet. Um, and aside from those kinds of acts, we don't have any specific laws or regulations yet that really like kind of stipulate um, our stance on that neutrality. So what do you think, um, what, what actions do you think the state and politicians should take um, on the internet? Like, do you think the Philippines right now is in need of law or regulation around it or are we fine as is? Uh, I, I keep on telling friends from uh, Senate and Congress, uh, the Philippines has a lot of laws, okay? Maybe it's time for them to stop creating new ones and look at existing laws, uh, perhaps that they can tweak or check if there's really uh, new laws that needs to be created, uh, that is one. Second is, uh, before we can go on to the discussion about net neutrality, first we need to address first uh, the, uh, the issues on accessibility for people in the Philippines to have access to the internet. Because uh, it is, uh, once it is done, then we can move on and talk about other things uh, related to the internet and connectivity. But not until the issue on connectivity is addressed, okay? Uh, if you go to different places in the Philippines, you will see that there is connection, except that access to the internet is another thing, okay? So even if, even if you go to different establishments, they will provide Wi-Fi, but as to some of my friends in the Valley would say, these are live files. We are able to connect to them, but they do not provide internet connection, okay? So something like that. So for me, it is better that we address the issue on connectivity first before we go on and deal with other stuff, uh, policy and governance stuff related to the internet. Yeah, I think that's fair. Um, Obviously, there's a lot of foundational work that needs to be done before we even think about um, bringing politicians in who may even complicate the issue further. So, yeah, um, yeah, accessibility is a huge question mark for all of us. And I know um, students have really faced like the brunt of it um, over the past year um, as online schooling has been forced upon all of us. So it's really students and young people experiencing the worst of it. And it's weird to think about like the larger web without, um, yeah, without even being able to talk with people as stably <laughs> online. Yeah, yeah. yeah thank you. I, I, I have this experience asking uh, kids, uh, especially in, on our uh, football uh, club when, before the pandemic, I was asking them, what is your email address? And they cannot tell me what their email address is but they have Facebook accounts, something like that. But, you know, you know, you know the, 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 the problem is that they were introduced to these channels way before they were introduced to what the real internet is. No, it's really unfortunate, but thank you for sharing that. So we have another question, and this one is about web load. So um, I noticed that, like, Compared to uh, when I surf websites as a kid um, or just websites a decade ago, many of them are filled with ads. Um, looking up online recipes on the internet consumes so much data. Um, even browsing Facebook, if I'm not on Facebook free, also takes up a lot of my internet data. Um, does Mozilla also work on any programming or advocacy work to change the way developers and technologists create content for the web 
um, what can we do to co- combat um, web bloat today? Uh, for one, it is something similar to this. Uh, they, there are web bloats because it is the way for these websites to to earn. Okay, so maybe if there is a way for them to change the way they generate revenue, okay, without doing this stuff, that would be better. But as of the moment, uh, I cannot think of any other way to combat them aside from maybe not patronizing this kind of websites. Okay, that's one. Uh, two is if you're using uh, a browser, maybe if you can install a pop-up blocker so that at least you can protect yourself from the harms that uh, this unscrupulous website will may bring to your system, okay? And yeah, basically those things. But from the side of Mozilla, what what, what you can do is, if you're using Firefox, we can now block uh, third-party cookies so that they will not be able to track you uh, even further, okay? And we also recently uh, noticed, aside from this, cookies that we thought are temporarily stored on the on our computers there are what we know and call now as super cookies cookies that are not temporary so they stay forever in your computers so uh in the coming versions of firefox we will address those kinds of cookies yeah and if i can add on i think um we discussed this also and developed before and Firefox has a lot of great plugins like Grease Monkey um, where you can customize um, your browser to completely strip away like common ad blocks. Um, so it's also just like having an ad blocker but a lot more robust because you can strip away like um, more types of content because you know um, I think YouTube has been starting to like collaborate with ad blocker to like yeah. not let people bypass ads which is really unfortunate and I correct me if I'm wrong but I think Firefox also has um the reader view so you can like remove all the clutter um from web page especially if you're like reading news articles and it just puts the content down bare bones and it's a bit weird for non-news sites um because like no one goes to websites the same way but it should generally work great for um, yeah, for, for more popular sites. I, I normally suggest that to my friends. If you are trying to access a web article behind a paywall, use Firefox and then click on the reader view. You should be able to see that article. Okay, we have a question from Pao. Pao, do you want to unmute and ask the question yourself? Or would you rather me read it out? <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> okay. Um, so Pao, Pauline Wee asked, what might be a feasible alternative to earning via ads? What is your take on subscription-based models? Right now, I cannot thought of any. Uh, subscription-based models is good for as long as one, they will not share your personal data to any organization outside of your business. Okay. Uh, two, earning via ads is... Uh, Perhaps one of the best ways uh, a website or a creator will be able to do right now, except that you have to choose uh, from where your ads are coming from. Okay, uh, th- uh, for one, we know that there are ad systems that generates ads, uh, give you some sort of revenue, but in turn, they are tracking the users of your website. That's not the good thing. Okay, but. Yeah, we, we, we are not basically against uh, this kinds of s- scheme, except that we should be aware that this, uh, some of these companies are actually making use of your data to earn more, okay? And from collecting your data, they are also sharing it to, other, to outside their organizations. That is the bad thing. I think similarly, um, I'm curious to know, aside from um, the features that you discussed that Mozilla offers um, and, and it's and our suite of services. We looked at um, the, the Google movement. So, you know, Google is like something that we're all also forced to use as is Facebook. Um, but there's a lot of alternatives that people try to find um, alternatives to Gmail, alternatives to the search engine itself, like using DuckDuckGo instead of Google. Um, are there any products or services that you can recommend or vouch for um, even personally that 
actually respect people's data? Okay. Uh, for search, yeah. One of the best would be DuckDuckGo. Uh, if you're using Firefox, it depends on the region where you are right now. Uh, if you're downloading uh, Firefox, the English version, by default, it will have Google as the default search engine. But you are free to change it to any. Uh, there's, uh, if you go to settings, you will see uh, quite a number of search engines available there. Uh, if you are from Germany, from what I know, the default there is DuckDuckGo. So that is one. For alternatives to Gmail, of course, Gmail would be the most common and popular right now. Uh, Proton Mail is okay. okay. Or if you can, just run your own email server. That would be more awesome. Thank you so much for listening to this. Um, that is 3 p.m. And if no one has any more questions, I think we can wrap this talk up. But thank you so much, Bob, for taking the time to share Mozilla's mission, um, initiatives, and your personal views about um, the infrastructural needs that the Philippines must first face before we can think about larger questions on the internet. Um, I'm reminded also, um, just like a tangent, that Myanmar is currently going under a coup and the military has been essentially blocking internet access across the country, um, even taking down like cell towers um, on a nightly basis. So it is a total black blackout, but then like just looking at the data um, and seeing the reports of the internet shutdown reminds me of how lucky we are and how crucial it is to really treasure um, the internet as it is and also re recognize too that there's a lot of work that we need to do. Um, elections are coming up next year. Um, the landscape of the internet is ever changing as you've detailed and there's so much that we can do um, to better it and make a level playing field for all Filipinos. Yeah. <laughs> yes. so, Th thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, so if, if people who are watching right now have questions, uh, feel free to ping us uh, on social media. It's Mozilla Philippines. Uh, email is info at Mozilla Philippines dot org. Uh, there. So uh, related to the elections, we are planning something. Hopefully we are able to launch it just in time for May, uh, one year before the elections happen. So we will need the help of as many people as we can. Wait, that's so exciting. I, I didn't expect that. <laughs> so for develop members who want to in, in who want to volunteer or get involved with Mozilla, um, I guess we'll share the the volunteer link um, that you mentioned earlier. Um, yes. is it join.mozillaph.org? Yes, yeah. it's join.mozillaph.org. So it's basically just an online form so that we'll be able to know where to contact them. Yeah. We'll spread it around our student community. I'm sure we have a lot of technologists, designers, and writers, and just like young people of all backgrounds who are eager to get involved in the movement. Um, I know this is a cause also very close to develop and to much of our community. So again, thank you everyone for tuning in. Um, thank you for all your questions. Um, I know whenever we talk about the internet in the Philippines, it's always the same questions, but disinformation, decentralization, accessibility. There's so much work that we have to do and it's great that we opened up this space for discourse and for discussion about it. Um, for those who are interested in more develop events and talks, um, feel free to join us on our Facebook group. Um, you can just find everything at develop, um, developph.org um, and we have a Discord and server that you can join and if you, want to connect with Bob, um, we'll share his contact details and the Mozilla Philippines contact details as well. Um, but do you have any last words or anything you want to share with our student community? <laughs> uh, yun lang. Uh, thank you again and just stay awesome online. Maraming salamat po. Yeah, let's um, on FCK the web together. <laughs> okay, have a good Saturday, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.